Not every time that I do a beat, I want to make a video to it, right? You know, sometimes you just want to cook up in your own zone. Don't worry about cameras, nobody watching you, nothing like that. So I grabbed a sample out of Splice, and let me show y'all how I chopped it up. So let me play all the chops for you now. Let's build out the rest of our drums. All right, so that's the foundation of our drums. Let's drag some of these out of machine into Logic, and then we'll continue building out the beat from there. So y'all know the routine. We're gonna click right here, click and hold, left click and hold, drag out, drop it on the timeline. Ooh. And then we'll do that for the rest of the drums. Now we can work from strictly from our Logic timeline. So I grabbed a vocal file from Splice and I'm chopping it in Serato sample. And then we'll just repeat that. Keep it simple, right? I won't quantize it. Let's hear the sample chop with the vocals. So originally I was gonna filter out the low end of the sample and then play my own bass line on top of it, but I kinda like the bass line that's embedded in the sample already into the chops. So I think we're gonna leave that there. Kinda gives it a more authentic vibe anyway, right? Let's turn our vocals into audio file. Let's add some sauce to that. Add a little distortion to it with this heat button or saturation. Like a little flanger. Push it in the back of the mix a little bit. See if we can get some delay on it. What does it sound like? I like that. Clarity. I'll play with that one inside of the mix. Well, with the playback to see um, what it does to it. Chorus. All right, let's add some compression to that to kind of even out the dynamics. Let's volume match it first, so take down the peak reduction. All right, so I already hear that I need some compression on my Sample chops just a little bit. I want to even those out also. Let's volume match first.
So I just wanted to even it out a little bit. I don't want to kill the peaks on it because I like the transient attacks of the sample. All right, so like I said, since I'm not going to play a bass on top of this, I'm going to duplicate the sample, roll out all of the top end just to leave the low end and treat that as the bass separately. So let's duplicate our sample. And then we just copy it down. Option drag, click and hold, and I'll make this one the bass. Let's open up our EQ. Roll off all the top end down to the bass frequencies. All right, so like that, but I'm hearing a tubby frequency. Sound like it's about 300-ish. Um, even though I've rolled off past that, but let's see if we can find it. Might be in the hundred that I don't like. So let's see if we can take that out. Let's go narrow Q. right there. Yeah, that's better. Let's put my compressor under that. Come on. Let's add some distortion to it first. Let's go decapitate it since that's a thicker distortion. solo it so you guys can hear what I'm doing. All right, so let's put that distortion or saturation above our EQ. This is going to highlight that same frequency that I just cut. Oh, so on the sample itself, I'm going to cut that up to about 140 out so that this can just be just a sample, just the keyboard part or take up the keyboard portion.
So that's the bass and the sample rolled off together. Still sounds like one unit. from now and I like how it has the vinyl inside the sample also Let's see if we can find some symbols. I know exactly where I want to get it from. Let's go Logic Stock. And let's go for Live. I'll just search for a Crash. I'm not even going to quantize that, but I am going to take out the extra one I didn't want. Do we want to put on this? Dirty. If I take all of this out, this could be an intro. Let's do a tape stop effect. Let's go to If I'm going to make that the intro, let's filter it out a little bit more. All right, so let's roll back some more of the, let's roll back some more low energy off of that for the intro. Take some top end off too. Give us that telephone effect. I 
could automate it like this. Yeah, that'll be fire. Let's do that. All right, so the automatic, you click right here. Let's go latch. Our cursor's at the beginning. And while it's playing back, I'm just gonna move my low pass filter right here. Watch. Change that to read. Press A to turn our automation lane on, lane on if you want to see it. And we'll turn this to right, right down here where it says two channel or channel two EQ high frequency cutoff since that's what we did. And that'll show you what we did on the automation right there. And then you get to see it right here with the EQ simultaneously. Could before we go back into the next first, uh, yeah, let's copy that. It asked me if I want to copy that automation, move it. Yep, I could do something like this. And then go into the second verse, or sorry, go into the first verse. But yo, thanks for tapping in, y'all. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully you learned something from this. Like I said, I was gonna cook this up all the way to the end by myself off camera, but it was such a vibe. I said, you know what, let me share this with y'all. So hopefully you found value in this. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with somebody. Please, please, please share it so that someone else can learn something from it. All right, tell somebody about it.